Ladies and gentlemen, here's the motherfucking tea. <laughs> Hello, and welcome back to the final My Hero Reviews of Season 5. I'm Scott. That's a grant. What a season, what a season it's been, Scott. Can you believe the numbers we're hitting right now on this season? Incredible stuff. You can't see my expression, but it is non-placid. I mean, I can see your expression. I'm looking right at you. Oh, okay. So you're okay. So you're actually. So you do see my non-placidness. I. Right. Mm. It's the benefit of Zoom. And then over there, we've got Alani. Say hi, Alani. Hi, Alani. Yeah, I did it. Uh, you did the thing. I did the thing. Yeah. Uh, this episode, man, like you, you, you get a, you get a few more wiki drops and something that made me very mad. Something I'm, that we discussed earlier. I'm gonna throw in there that uh, I'm kind of glad that we were wrong last week i feel like we both thought this was going to be a fillery episode and uh this was not <laughs> at least i don't think so i, I there, there was definitely there were definitely some stuff that felt like filler i mean they uh, spent some time on everybody's new moves and by new moves some of them it's just like i know how to predict things better and other people like uh what's his name multi-arm guy doesn't even say anything he's just in <laughs> in audio girls group who just I, learned yeah. how to surveillance yeah, we, we got to like see like, yeah, no, we, we learned from these people and four poor fucking Coda just getting bitched and gas like, <laughs> hey, he learned from the dishwasher. <laughs> hey, what did he learn? But, but, I don't the, know. The eighth ranked hero. I'm gonna go True. ahead and say he's okay. The person I feel kind of bad for is uh Momo, where it's like her care her hero, Majestic, apparently doesn't even rank. Like he doesn't <laughs> get a number. Everyone else, including freaking Ida's normal hero manual who's number 222 like by the way <laughs> that implies majestic is significantly lower by the way how would you like to be referred to as normal hero <laughs> <laughs> also eat learned manners <laughs> that's, I, that's that was his superhero uh, gains this summer or whatever i had completely forgotten by the way that that this whole like scene where they show off the powers existed so that's why i thought it might be partially filler last week that's there is like one... the reason that i was like is that was that in the manga and and it was i'd just forgotten it's there's been a long thing, time there's one thing that i thought was kind of cute about the scene uh when the robots were popping in like introducing themselves like ah we're the skynet of this world i'm like oh that, that, <laughs> that's actually kind of cute that the school would reference terminator as a means to like let the kids know hey this is what would happen if an ai were trying to take over the world go fight them <laughs> i like to think that it's just the ai has actually you know come up with that as all themselves like all by themselves they're like because it does seem like the ai is a little bit more uh, like highly functional than just being a uh a, a, yeah, a normal program. No, yeah they see they seem more aware yeah don't you think made... they would have been made by like gearhead or whatever the hell the guy's name is the the dude that teaches big titty mc tech girl Maybe. oh yeah I'd say I, I feel like they're programmed to uh like do that exercise for second year students and and it is kind of neat like seeing them move into the second year and you realize oh yeah they like you know this this is like they are at kind of like the next level here they are you know they've moved up a rank and it up. actually feels like it and then they even had like the little line drops like yeah but since we have to do all this stuff we won't be interacting with the first years very much which is why we never saw any second years <laughs> yeah don't, don't worry about us introducing a glut of new characters as the the new freshmen come in we don't interact with them all that much yeah no. yeah it is it is sort of funny that the like okay cool so no, we're not going to introduce all these new characters. We'll never see them. Let's just <laughs> move on. Uh, move on to our second year. We've already got another class that barely anybody cares about. So, <laughs> look, let those yeah. second years become third years that nobody will pay attention to. Just get me to that school festival. I want to sit. Nah, we're never getting there. We're, we're I was a little more. excited because they were kind of like, you know, like, oh man, we're going to have this like. Uh, I'm jumping ahead, but they're like, we're having this school end part or this like year end party. Class 1B is going to be here soon too, right? And then like it cuts to later in the party. Class 1B is not there. They never, they just ghosted <laughs> we, them. We, we never see them. Uh, Absolutely I was, I was looking forward for a little bit of downtime with them because I feel like we only run into them when we're going to fight. Yeah. During the opening part when they were fighting or during the part where we get back to them and they're fighting the robots, I'm just sitting there thinking, you know, they just blew their potential for the next season opener. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. I, I know what you mean. Um, also, we got a little bit more with uh, the doctor, mm -hmm. which he's um, 
he's actually it's always it's really fun to see him as a character now because for the longest time uh i've i've known like hey by the way that doctor from the very first episode comes back and he's diesel <laughs> doing stuff is he is he actually the doctor i feel like yes feel like that's the same fucking guy that. okay yeah, right. that is, if, if that's, that's, if that's, that's canonically the same dude that's fun 100 percent. it's the same motherfucker I've, I feel like he looks just like him, but I feel like I've had multiple people go like, no, it's not the same guy. It's different. Yeah, no. All like, doctors in this universe just look the same. It, yeah. They have a similar look, but it's not actually him or something. But I, I, I'm i never sure, so I'm always hesitant to say that. But if it is him, that is it, a fun bit. If you took a look, if you watched that first episode and then watched this episode, you wouldn't even question it. You okay. just haven't seen that. You just haven't seen that first. I episode haven't looked in a at while. the first episode in a while. Yeah, it's it's the glasses. It's the glasses and the mustache. They're exactly the same. Like man, yeah. And so that's why it's a small Japan after all. <laughs> a lot of people. Full Robotnik. And and that's why there was a, there were a lot of like rumors like oh my god what was like he was he searching for people with quirks and Looking then reporting them to all for, or all for one and it's it it, it started this huge fucking like theory that maybe he stole Midoriya's quirk and it's just, it's just a whole thing yeah um, I'm into it but yeah no it's uh the moment the moment he uh was revealed to be evil the fucking phantom went crazy <laughs> the so mad now, doctor so now basically he's just trying to pump more power into Shigaraki and that's like the torturous cocoon he's in right now before he'll <laughs> emerge as the big bad the next ultimate season. villain butterfly yeah, yeah. They've, he's got to undergo his, uh, oh, there's a term for that. But yeah, metamorphosis. He, he metamorphosis, um, which is, uh, that's neat, I guess, oh, as a way I, to take care of, like, hey, so you're you're strong now, but we kind of need you, like, doomsday level. Yeah, we, so. we, we, need you, we need you unfairly strong. Look, Rock, Rocky could fight, you know, Rocky could go up against Clubber Lang, but we need Ivan Drago here. We need to start juicing you. Okay? <laughs> we need we need the strongest boxer science can make. Yeah, uh, we need one of those robots gonna, from Real Steel. Okay, mm -hmm. gonna be real unfortunate when uh, Deku shows up and like Shigaraki is gonna be like, I have new power. And, like does like his disintegration by distant touch thing. It's gonna be like, oh shit, he's so much better now. And then he's like, also, I've got a million powers. <laughs> so like, what? Wait a minute. I ah, but so, this but is an so, increment. <laughs> but so does Deku, as we've learned. Uh, and this is the part that upset me. He's gonna learn how to fucking fly. <laughs> when he clearly just got a really cool, I like mean, transversal, like Spider-Man power just a moment ago. It's, ah. Uh, well, if it means anything to you, it's float. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it same could be difference. Different. We we haven't we haven't been told specifically. Well, but we do see a shot of her floating. Although, although I do but kind I mean, of I wonder. Mean, we know it's called float, but we don't know exactly what its parameters are. I guess. Yeah. Is what I mean, I, I do fair. kind of wonder. We because uh, I was thinking back after he mentioned like you know ah oh, my master's power float, and I was thinking back to that fight with Overhaul and how he's just kind of standing in the sky. I'm like, is he subconsciously using it there already <laughs> or? Or was that just, you know, anime frames, anime being He's anime. being suspended by matter. He's destroying and putting back together real quick. I think it it, it might just be uh, the anime being stylistic there. <laughs> you need your Dragon Ball shot where the villain is floating above the city. Um, but I, yeah. I, I, did, I did love Bakugo's response to that, though. Like, <laughs> ha! I win already! I can already do that! You'll never beat me, asshole! You're now you've got to learn what I can already I do, you dumb motherfucker! <laughs> no, I'm just going to have to learn it real quick. Then I'll catch up to you. Fuck you, you will! <laughs> By the way, can we just appreciate his laugh? The yes. laugh he does, the ha 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 ha! That is so fucking over the top. Uh, what a little that, that shit. That scene there was peak Bakugo. <laughs> it, oh my god, it really was. And then the look on Midoriya's face when he's like, "Oh god, oh he's no, right. he's right." <laughs> yeah, it's oh I, okay. I am very happy with the where the rivalry is right now. This is good mm -hmm. shit. I like this. I'm <laughs> I'm about this. I love Bakugo being like, "Okay, he has the ultimate superpower, so he's the one I have to stay ahead of no matter what." <laughs> I'm yep. on top of him. I'm fine. Everything's and, okay. And so far, Bakugo's won every one-on-one -on -one round. They've gone up against each other. So, except, uh, except for like the first test. Uh, they was, did. Uh, yeah, the very first one where he kind of got thrown off. Uh, and I and I also liked how just like they were kind of looking through the powers, like, 
And Bakugo's just like, man, none of these people have like exciting or cool powers. And Tech is like, they're all cool. He's like, well, no, maybe to you. Yeah, and they, then I've never heard of any of these losers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bakugo says something really mean, right? He's like, to your limited like perspective or whatever, every power seems cool. Yeah. And like Tech is like, that's mean. And then All Might comes in like, he's right though. Like th these weren't very good powers. Like, also, they all died incredibly young because apparently <laughs> the guy that wants to kill me also wanted to kill yeah. all of them. And at this, you. At this time, All for One was stomping out anyone with good powers. So this was what we had to work with. By the way, like, that is such a fascinating uh, like way to give Midoriya powers. Because, yeah, if you just gave him like uh, fireballs and fl full on flight and like, I don't know, psychic powers and a bunch of really high level shit, uh, then yeah, he would be kind of overpowered but instead it's a bunch of low level powers he can then learn how to like utilize and combine and i think that's man, be, man. beyond that it's not only utilize and combine but it is uh, also filtering them through the power amplification of uh one for all also that yeah so it's i think it's such a i remember back when uh we first got introduced to the fact that he would have multiple powers which i was like that's a little weird we spent so much time just on the super strength how are we going to be able to like it, it, it's sort of it's sort of that power creep feeling right like oh now you've got this new ability but don't worry we're not going to spend nearly as much time on this one as we did on that initial ability because one you, nobody wants to see you go through all that again and uh two we yeah, just can you imagine start... if he broke his hands every time he used black whip for, like the season <laughs> just ri rips his arm out of his socket every time he tries but that's sort of the fascinating thing of these being low level powers whereas the super strength is like S tier when fully utilized without, you know, it literally destroying whatever body parts using it. Um, all these other ones are much lower tier, which means it, there's no, there's no, not so much danger and so much, not so much practice that needs to go into utilizing them. Um, it's more just learning how to use them at the same time, multitasking appropriately, making them second nature. So it's such a cool way to power up Deku in a way that's that feels natural and not too sh shark jumpy. I, I like that you say not dangerous when the way we were introduced to him using Black Whip was him <laughs> was literally destroying the center that they were fighting in and all the teachers being like, oh, that's not good. <laughs> To be fair, it wasn't the power that was necessarily the problem. It was uh, a combination of factors. <laughs> uh, but, it, but, it was, but it was the unrestrained power with the full might of uh, all for or one for all behind it. Yeah, boosted it. Uh, although, um, much like Aizawa had once said, uh, now that he knows, now that he knows the basics and how to control all for one, he can. Uh, well, okay, let's just uh, one say for all. One, one for all. Let's just say the super strength. He can then <laughs> utilize that as he has been doing with Black Whip. Which, uh, might, might, might I throw out there, his, con his like, learned control of it seems incredibly unearned. Oh like, yeah, it's 100%. Just, it, it, it's just kind of like, aha, I have it now. Boom, done. Which, I guess I kind of understand to a certain degree of, um, you don't want to spend too much time specifically on this one thing, and maybe there is that element of okay i can kind of get that little feeling of it so now i'm just going to practice this more off screen hey hey remember when there was a huge uh, like m amount of time both within the show and between chapters and episodes between him getting black whip and learning it how to use it appropriately oh wait there wasn't because some idiot decided to change around the story arcs completely fuck up the pacing maybe yeah, i'm still with fucking the timeline mad about it. maybe I'm fucking with the timeline like that actually helped to forgive that i don't know for me i mean again but it's, it's, but it is kind of weird if you go say like months in between him learning black whip and fully utilizing it and an entire arc it's way less bothersome it's way talk, less frustrating you want to talk about time skip uh how about we talk about the fact that they finished their end of year party and then the after credit sequence is spring now i'm sure we're going to get <laughs> something next season that takes place in the winter still but man, it's like the, the, like the after credit sequences. By the way, war's coming. Like this is what you're getting next season. Just, just Wait, don't, don't don't even think about it. Hold on, was that spring? They say spring they're, they're break is they're, almost over. Yeah, they something. say spring break is almost over. There's cherry blossoms everywhere. Uh, it certainly doesn't seem oh. like winter to me. Okay, all right. I I I actually missed out on that. 
but okay. Uh, before we get too much further, I do want to say I really liked the part uh, when Deku was showing off his new mastery of Black Whip and we get some internal monologuing from All Might where he's yeah. just like, you don't even look back at me anymore because you don't have to. Like, you've you've really grown into your own. This isn't the, the Deku I met who everything had to be approved and like was kind of running everything by and making sure his hero saw him. It's like, you know, I'm looking at you or you don't need that approval anymore because you've grown kind of stuff. It was like it was like a really touching moment. Yeah. I, I like that a lot. There's actually something that uh, Mother's Basement put, pointed out in the openings because uh, he got famous for doing analyzations of openings from anime and he has all the My Hero ones. Um, he pointed out in the first like several openings, uh, it slowly shows you Midoriya look like idolizing and looking up to um, All Might yeah, from behind. Yeah, looking up to him, then, and then like standing side by then side. Standing side and... by side, and then standing in front of him, and then finally, there's All Might's no All just, Might. Yeah, there's no All Might anymore, and that's such a great. I love. I, I honestly, that is such a great visual cue. I really like how they did that, especially in that. Um, in the I think it's the fifth opening where he pushes him from the back to start running. It's yeah. it's really cute, and I I appreciated that and. That's what that's the kind of shit that I love in my openings. Stuff that uh, helps communicate symbolism. The yeah, symbolism. Yeah. Uh, we we did get like a bit of scenes with kind of midlife crisis All Might here, uh, where he's like, "I just want to help people, but I, I really can't anymore." So I'm trying to figure out what I need to do here exactly. Can I go <laughs> hang out with you and Ari? Just. Uh, uh, so yeah, I'm kind of useless now. Uh, would you mind if I just hung out with you and and Ari and and and, Who's, and President uh, Mike and you're Ari. a workaholic and this is just indicating your addiction. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to enable you. Uh, we also see that Ari's having some issues. Her power is like creeping back, and Aizawa has to go back in there and be like, "Hey, no, you're okay. You're here at school, and everything's gonna be okay." And he hints that next season he's going to take on a more mentor role with her begin training and then maybe we can get uh Emilio back oh yeah yeah which which I was also worried because the one like energy girl or whatever her power is I always forget uh Mexico? when she's yes when she's sitting with Ari I'm like trying to remember like exactly what Ari's power does and I'm just like wait should you be like that close to her is this gonna be a problem that you're like just sitting there as she's scratching her horn are you gonna start like de-aging or whatever like I can't remember exactly I feel like she just kind of turns back the clock on you or something. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of a problem when you have the god child with you. I like the idea of, of Aizawa just showing up with a fucking, um, oh, what do you call it? Uh, oh, will you use it to, to scrape stuff down. Scrape? Oh, yeah. Uh, What's it called? Scrape Raper? stuff. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, you know, um, not a chisel. Uh, file, a file. Yes, shows up uh, with a file. Filing down her horn. Yeah. Like, there yeah. we go. There you go. We're all, all better now. now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She just has like the half horn, like Hellboy. <laughs> when uh, when Aizawa and All Might were talking, he also mentions to All Might that you need to cancel <laughs> your your meeting with Stain. Yeah. And, uh, Another thing for next season. I'm like, I want that scene now. I know. I right? don't know where I got it in my head. I thought Stain died. <laughs> like, no. I, I, I thought like the like I thought they were like he like I, I guess they probably lost consciousness or something. I know he had that like last second freak out where he kills a Nomu to save Deku, I think, or something, or whatever it was. Uh, and then like I thought they like zoomed in on him and then said something like, "And he died, something, something." <laughs> but like it, apparently not. Apparently, I completely misremembered yeah, that. They last just scene locked him away. It just locked him away in Tartarus with the rest of them. Which you yeah. know, keeping all of your super villains in one place is a recipe for disaster. It uh, well, kind of, it's sort of yeah and sort of not. Nah. It's kind of like the whole like split up splash, keep everyone together sort of thing. Um, where if you split them up, you also have to split up your manpower. You, you don't have them all in one location. That's easier to manage. But when you yeah, but I'm place, I'm waiting on the I'm waiting on the inevitable jailbreak. Oh really? I mean, I feel like you have all these people in one place. It's it's uh. So you think at some point, like some villains going to like either from the inside or I the mean, outside? Do you think it'll be from the inside all, or the outside? We have all for Look, one in there. He will yeah, totally orchestrate I, a jailbreak. At I, some point. I, I, honestly, I I feel like they've set all for one up as this very Madara Uchiha level threat, where he's going to be the true big bad. Yeah. When once Shigaraki ultimately, you know, once Deku either sways his way of thinking or beats him, 
and then it's gonna be like, ah, oh, I was planning for this the entire time. Absorb that bitch. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. My my prediction is that Shigaraki is unknowingly still just a pawn in this whole thing, and there's going to be like a big turn at some point where all for one is gonna be like, all right, you've served your purpose. Uh, by the way, you getting all these powers injected to you into you makes it easier for me to take them or some sort of, yeah. you know, workaround thing where it's going to be like, surprise, this was just my plan to make me stronger. Thanks yeah, which, a bunch, buddy. Which, which don't get me wrong. I would love to be wrong here. I would love for my, you know, assumptions of all of these tropes to be uh, completely assuaged, like pushed to the side of. I love being surprised, but this is just kind of the way I see things going as somebody that's consumed enough media. Yeah, uh, as as you and I have stated many times before, being media literate can sometimes really damage your enjoyment of a story in certain ways because it a lot of things that come natural um, <laughs> start to ruin surprises. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But hey, like I, if that is the story they want to tell, I'm cool with that. Like there are there are moments within that story that I can still get like hype as hell over. Because I mean, I'll go back and like rewatch scenes that I've seen like a thousand times before and still be like, fuck yeah. Yeah. I still think Deku versus uh, Todoroki is like one of the best leagues ever. Deku oh, versus yeah. Todoroki, uh, Deku versus Muscular. Uh, that, mm -hmm. that one always gets my goosebumps going. I like how Horikoshi had to like release a statement later being like, no, it wasn't actually like that high of a percentage. It was just hyperbole. <laughs> because oh, yeah, of it was course. really confusing. It's, it's like, it's it's for like it's for like that's how Midoriya feels. It's like this is how much further I have to push myself to win. I have to go with a million percent in my heart. Honestly, percentages are always arbitrary. Like that that's kind of the thing. I mean, kind of. Remember, Deku's actually running on very strict percentages in his brain. Like yes, but but when he's going beyond plus ultra, I anything know. beyond a hundred percent is. <laughs> <laughs> It was just a little bit confusing for some readers because they could not tell the, like, since he had so uh, sl slavishly uh, stuck to those percentages throughout his training and used mm -hmm. the power, to suddenly throw statistic. that out there, it was like, wait, hold on. Um, <laughs> Wouldn't yeah. that percentage make his entire body explode? I I need to, let me get in line at a convention. I need to ask uh, some questions. This is anime fact checker here. And uh, if he was using a billion percent, that would be enough power to be a planet buster. Look, I'm a mod on the wiki, so <laughs> I need to know facts. I run a Discord server. Would you mind doing an interview with me? If he was a billion percent, the very breath from his nostrils would be creating craters the <laughs> size of Japan. Uh. Just the sheer the sheer heat radiating from I his mean, blood would be plasma. It's, it's, I, it wouldn't work, I say. I've been here before, and I hate the thought that I've been here before. <laughs> no, let, let's and let's talk so about my hero feet. Faster Come on. than light travel is in science fiction, it's fantasy. Would, would one million percent make him a planet buster? Let's get <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> There's no way. If 100% is what All Might was doing, yes. A thousand All Mights, they'd kill a planet. They could do Probably. it. Probably. 1,000 All Mights punching at the same time. Boom, planet gone. Uh, Actually, somebody, wait, would, that would be 100,000. It'd be 10,000 All Mights. 10,000 All Mights. Somebody's saying, this is why I duck out during the Q&A section of panels. Can I just take a moment? When people go to panels with anime voice actors, specifically the ones in the English dub, isn't it weird when people ask those actors questions about like on the what, creative level, like on that, the creative level of the show? That like is the thing, like it's this level of depressing thing where it's like, oh, people don't realize who makes decisions and things or who who runs things or knows things <laughs> like yeah, so, I, sometimes that these sometimes are people who have not case, done their research sometimes it's a like well maybe as the actor they are given more information about their character than we do like so uh, I, I can understand that to a certain degree but that's for actually, the most part all you're getting is the actor's interpretation that's sometimes sometimes on a rare occasion is actually true on rare occasions uh, there will be translation notes that come with parts about the story that are specifically handed down by the production yeah, committee. Yeah, to, to kind of give context for certain lines. Yeah, just to make like sure. Like, this, this is hinting at something later. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, like, hey, don't write it like this and try and perform it like this. Specifically because we don't want to confirm or deny this plot point. And I think that's, that's interesting. But yeah, like... 
most people, most voice actors have no idea about where the story's going to go or wh what a lot of the symbolism, like, specifically means half the time. And at yeah. least for interviews, I feel like I've heard, they're often like, yeah, I am shown the script that day. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you go in there, anime voice acting, it's all cold reading. And a like, lot of a lot a lot of people ask like you know what what do you what do I do to become a voice actor get good at cold reading yeah um a lot of people <laughs> a lot of actors are like yeah we're actually really discouraged from watching the anime so beforehand so it doesn't uh influence our performance <laughs> So yeah, a lot of these actors are not are actively discouraged to watch from watching the sub version because they don't the directors don't want them to have this preconception of how they should perform the scene before they get in the booth. Even though they usually like sh li let you listen to the Japanese audio, they call it the J when you're in there. Yeah, they let you listen to the J before you do your piece, so you're still kind of listening to it. It's weird. Yeah, well, you're but you're getting an idea of, of the the tone of the like scene. Length you don't have nearly enough enough time to come up with your own interpretation that you're going to stick to. Yeah, that's true. Like, yeah, get, get, yeah. the difference between getting the scene the couple seconds before you have to record and watching the episode like a night or two before, yeah, vastly different. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Either way, uh, w w well beyond the pale on that conversation. I just think it's interesting to talk about. Oh, very much, yeah. <laughs> um, Fun thing. Uh, something we skipped, the very beginning of this episode has a lot of Hawks kind of chilling with the, the new paranormal liberation society yeah uh and it's like they they kind of i feel like give us information that would have made things make more sense to me earlier where he's like kind yeah. of pointing out that shigaraki's like now reached the top of this and he's like shigaraki now has the support of all of these like underlings he has the support of uh feel good Dem ink <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> He's got Redestro's company, and like that's when they like actually tell us what Redestro's company. I feel like does. By the <laughs> way, like something we had not. I don't think it's been told. <laughs> we, which we got told in the manga before this, way before this. Uh... Yeah. Uh, so it's just like he's got you know the the people who make hero support tools, so a, like a giant conglomerate. He's got the the hearts and minds party now behind him. This guy, this villain in a society of heroes, now has more power than most heroes. <laughs> like just more sway. Oh, uh, oh, oh. It, it is, it was a little odd to me. I know they were in their like own headquarters and like, hey, yeah, no, we're supporting this guy. But then you have like heroes hanging around with the dude that literally just destroyed this city. I, I feel like there'd be a, just a couple of people going like, hmm, I don't know if this is what I signed up for. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm all about freedom of quirks, but th that seems a little <laughs> yeah, was, dangerous. Was, uh, what was his name? The scoot and go guy? Was he supporting, yeah, the, geno was he supporting the genocide of an entire city? <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> it doesn't seem like he's the type. Also, who do you think who do you think's gonna fight slide and go like who, who, who's like is it gonna be coda is that gonna be coda's big arc oh uh, no that's slide and go obviously it's Ida. uh <laughs> we're gonna have to outrun each other there's um, a man there's a man skating away Ida, go by the way i should i should point out that we see best genus body we do we do see best genus body we don't know if it's actually his, but uh, Dobby does say, like, I, I don't care if that's actually him. This means you killed somebody, though. You're one of us now. You can't uncross that line. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a lot. <laughs> the, yeah, the, the, the line, I don't even know if that's actually him, feels like a little too heavy handed for me, but it's uh this is this is one of the places where i'm gonna have trouble like saying anything unfortunately yeah, I because like, I, I, I literally understand. cannot yeah. say anything in this moment that won't lean one way or the other yeah um let me but, just yeah, say that, that was just one of those lines where i'm just like did you really need to use that i don't know whatever <laughs> I, I i understand the spirit of it i it's it's interesting is all i want to say yeah but um yeah it's a uh, very different it I'm glad. I, I am glad that we got through this season. There were some really great high moments. What was your favorite part of this season, if I can ask? Hmm. It was kind of tough. Like I'm not. I'm not doing this like there weren't any good parts. <laughs> it's just, I'm trying to think of the, the one parts that, really that really stood, stood out stood to you, yeah. right? I I think my favorite part, my my favorite, uh, like just piece was uh, Bakugo doing his like teamwork tests and, and his whole line of like, look, I'm going in there. I, I'm, I'm gonna take the lead. I don't care what you guys do, but if you're in trouble, I'll save you. And if I look like I'm in trouble, save me. I'm like, oh, that's, that's great. <laughs> There's some I love growth that. here. Very, 
Yeah, it's, that's very great. It's still very much in character for him. Like I'm in, I'm in charge here. I'm gonna go kick some ass. You guys support me if you if it looks like I'm in trouble, and I'll save you if it looks like you're in trouble. Because that's what you do. You uh, you win to save people and win by saving people. Yeah. Yeah, that part is really good. Uh, I. Weirdly enough, I feel like a part that I really, really liked was the uh, was Todoroki versus Tetsu Tetsu Tetsu. Mm. Like that, like uh, the I'm just going to keep turning up this heat, but this metal man's going to keep punching me. The quad was just like a was just a good look. Like it, visually, I thought it was just like an, an arresting moment. And I really appreciated it. Yeah, the Quad fight is spectacular. I'm really glad that you brought that one up. I, I like the like concept of the stuff that happened in the My Villain arc, but I feel like execution, it was not the best. I feel like con yeah. conceptually, that was probably my favorite stuff that happened, but it's just, I, it didn't get me as hyped as like weirdly some of the class 1A versus 1B stuff did, just cause I think it was presented so much better. I know. It felt like, it I, felt like way much, it felt like way too much of like a mishmash, like a, we gotta get this done yeah. in this many episodes. We need to make room for that beach episode. Cause I, like sad parade or whatever. Sad like man's twice parade, as, yeah. Sad man parade, like that was awesome. Like I, I loved all that stuff. Like that was, that was great. I don't know if you have a Shonen Jump uh, subscription. I do, oh. and I am so glad that I do. Um, I'll let you borrow mine. I I know you've already watched it, but I can't recommend Read the manga it. for I, this part. I can't recommend reading it enough. It even though you've already seen it, I am almost certain that if you reread through it, it's going to hit a little different. Mm -hmm. Just like I can imagine. And it's a it's a bingeable read too. It's about like twenty three chapters, so it's it's not a lot. You can like get through it in an evening. So I highly recommend reading through the, that the, that part of this arc uh, or this saga, uh, season, season. Mm. Um, whereas I feel like everything was genuinely like handled well. I like how some people have said like, oh, Scott complains a lot. What is he like? And I'm like, I loved their adaptation of the first half of this season. Like, I loved it. I thought it was great. My only complaints were like one or two episodes were paced a little too slowly. Like, I, I was I was so nice the first half of the season, and then some people think like I can't be satisfied, and it's like no, I can just tell you where the uh, time and effort went into and where it didn't. Um, I'll say one of my favorite parts of the season actually, um, much like uh, in the original manga of this uh, of this particular arc, I really really liked the uh, stuff with Todoroki's family. I really liked that shit. I thought yeah. that was actually like some of my favorite character stuff in the entire show, because. Um, there's nothing I like more than a complicated bad person trying to get better. Like, that is always an arc that I can really appreciate watching if it's done correctly, because I like people realizing that they have been shit and that they can be better and trying to do better. That's captivating television right there. <laughs> and I also like that it's not just a, like, you know, flip of the switch and it's just like, well, I'm nice now and everyone, one, forgives them and two, it, it just goes on fine. I do yeah. like the more realistic, like, I'm trying, I'm doing it kind of clumsily because I've never done this before and no one's kind of taking it. <laughs> like, um, also, I want to give a, a shout out, even though I was talking about the my villain stuff, uh, Shigaraki's background, really, really good. Like that that whole thing I thought was done very well. Yeah. yeah. I was super, I was really looking forward to that shit. Like his backstory uh, is really fascinating and a perfect setup for a character like Shigaraki. Um, even if like every time I go back to it, there's still this part of me that kind of laughs at just how over the top tragic it is. <laughs> it's very like just the, I am a sad abused child and my power is to disintegrate everything I touch. Yeah. Especially the, my dog. Yeah. The, and the, the one time I reach out for support for someone is when I turn to blood. I was going to say dust, but bloody chunks. Yup. Yup. And, uh, just get to sit there in it. Uh, I need I I needed to pet my dog good and good after that. <laughs> Just no, don't touch it with all five fingers. Uh, but um, yeah. yeah. So okay, now just to balance it out, what was your least favorite part of this season? Oh. Uh, are we are we not including the beach episode? Yeah, I was gonna say that uh, beach like, episode. Like, would definitely okay, yeah. Be up let's there. Uh, of the actual story. How about? Hmm. I feel like it. it's not necessarily that it was like terrible, but I feel like bringing back Shinzo did not feel like oh. that meaningful, I guess. Cause it's just sort of like, 
he popped in and then it's like, well, all right, hey, that th thanks guest starring Shinzo, goodbye. <laughs> like, it's just like, and he's just kind of like, I'm here and I'm gone. But like, I also get that he's like class B, so we're probably not gonna see him, but it just felt like this thing where it was set up seasons ago. Like, I feel like it was forever ago that Shinzo walked by and like, someone was like, whoa, he's jacked now. Like, it was yeah. like, it's like, oh, like he's been training. He's gonna be coming back and he's gonna get his revenge match. And then like, it happens, but it's basically like a match that happens to tell us Deku's getting more powers and Shinzo has nothing to do with it. Like he he kind of steps oh. in, he steps in to kind of like bring him back to reality, which was important, yep. but it's like this, you know, really Shinzo had nothing to do with these powers awakening. This was not, their fight was really like kind of tertiary to everything that was happening in the moment. So it's just like this, like it's it was nice to see him again, but it really did not feel like I can feel like he didn't have to be there and it would not have changed anything about that arc. At least at least he got his, you know, showing off what he can do episode before that, like yeah, in, in like the first round. So it, at least there was like that and it wasn't just, uh, hey, we're bringing you in just so Deku can hit the next level. So yeah. th there was a little something there, but I do agree that like his entire point in that fight was basically just to be a, another step stone for Deku. Like, like he he shouts like, let's have our rematch or something. And that gives Deku like the mental capacity okay. to come back. But like, you're telling me if Bakugo or Todoroki had said that, it wouldn't have also snapped him back? Like, I I don't believe that, I think. By the way, I can't, uh, Aussie Dragoon stole it before I could say it. It makes me sad. But when you said snap back to reality, uh, back to reality, it's like snap back to reality. Oh, there goes the rabbity. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, for me, I think the part that like just kind of hung like kind of hollow the most outside of, you know, the actual like Todoroki family stuff was the uh, was the internship. It felt like, yeah. you know, going into it's like, oh, we're going to learn some cool stuff. They're going to like, you know, they're really going to be practicing. Oh, their, their goal is going to be to beat him at something before the end here. But then it all just kind of became about the family drama. And when they finally, you know, did the thing at the end and they, they caught the criminal before Endeavor did, ha ha, we win. It's like, a, it, it all just went on technicality. Yeah, they won on technicality. It, it rang kind of hollow and I didn't really feel like that work study did much of anything in terms of actually showing or uh, delivering any actual growth. Eh. That, that, that's me though. I, I again, feel like, I don't know if it was a matter of the pacing issue on that one, but I, I, when I was watching it, I was personally more interested in the actual story about uh, the Todoroki family. Exactly. So, I, I, I like, think, I think that like that part was fine, but the entire point of like the work study, it, it felt like it got drowned out by all these other plot points that they wanted to use that the main reason that they would be training with him kind of got pushed to the side. And I, I'm a sucker for a shonen training arc like that. That's something that I really like. Yeah, they definitely did basically eschew a training arc to be like, let's focus on some family drama. It's like, hard, I, like I, the training arc happened. It's just we didn't see it really. Like, I, I I love I love Heaven's Tower and and uh, freaking uh, Greed Island in Hunter Hunter specifically because those are just training arcs. Well, I don't know. For, for me personally, I um, I I was I guess more positive on that arc in general. Um, partially because I did feel like they were making improvements over that arc. We do actually see an improvement. Um, it's just, yeah, I can see why you would feel like it's undermined when they finally accomplish their task, but it's, uh, it's compromised by the fact that the only reason they were able to do it was because at that time there was an emotional toll being taken on Endeavor. Not yeah. only that, but they're trying to tell so many different stories at the same time. It just felt too muddled. They wanted to tell the Shigaraki, uh, or not the Shigaraki family, the uh, Todoroki, you know, Todoroki. Todoroki family stuff. Uh, they wanted to introduce the concept that like, by the way, there's a war coming. <laughs> uh, and like, they're trying to layer in all of this stuff when it's going on. It's like, okay, everything else just feels kind of hollow because of that. Like it, no, no one thing is getting it's just resolve here for me. For, uh, I the unfortunately, um, that is where the timelines fuck things up because that's you know that's very fair. Yeah, like the information about the war makes like is not so much of a pro like thing for you to focus on. It's more of a oh shit, this is now getting out to them. It's not just something that only Hawks knows now. Like it's way less. <sighs> it's way less fucking muddled when you do it like that. 
That's why, again, I really, really, really am glad that, like, reading forward, they can't do this again. Like, mm -hmm. unless, unless something crazy happens later in the manga, there will never be another time where they can literally just switch around events to uh, 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 on this scale, which, thank God, because this was a fucking mess. This actually, this sucked, because now that I've seen it in, in, in full, yeah, they really, really hurt both arcs in big ways by doing this stupid bullshit, because they just wanted it to end on this big climax with Shigaraki instead of the stuff with Todoroki's family. Which, and, is, which is the biggest fucking shame because I remember like in the early part of the season, I'm like, oh God, this drags so much. I really would have rather binge this. And while there were like some really high highs in that part, including my favorite part of the season, you kept hyping up like, no, the second half's gonna be great. Second half's gonna be great. Second half's gonna be great. <laughs> and then that was the most muddy kind of like rushed, weird tilt stuff, which still had really cool shit, but yeah, you're right. It got fucked by the way they decided to tell the story. Yeah, it's I could ridiculous. definitely, I could definitely see like the war reveal being exciting if we had a whole arc of like Hawks being entrenched in the villain stuff and seeing like, oh, their numbers are getting really big and they've got powerful people behind them. They've got money. They've got society. They, this is actually getting bad. But if I tell anyone, my cover is gonna be blown. I can't, and then like just the, like, I could see that tension building and then like us peeking away from it and then Hawks showing up and be like, hey, Endeavor, here's this really good book. You should look at this really good book, my dude. Like, and just, I like, highlighted I, some <laughs> passages for you in case you don't want to read all of the book. <laughs> yeah. But like, I could, I could totally see that being like a, oh my God, like Endeavor, like I know what he's trying to convey to you and I need you to figure this out. But like, since going in, I really did not get the magnitude, even though they were throwing the number of like, what was it, like 110,000 soldiers oh strong God. or something. Like, yes, that is a big number, but like conceptually, you don't really get that when with how it's being conveyed. Cause like, you know, in my mind, I'm just like, I, I guess like logically, if I thought it through, it would make more sense. But like, I hear a hundred thousand people. I'm like, that is a lot of, supporters but like i don't know if that's like powerful but seeing like well it's like a hundred thousand like people with superpowers who are backing this idea that we should basically this is a hundred thousand good guys with guns are now coming in and being like we're going to make our decision and it's just like be like oh god like it's like i've suddenly realized like oh that would be a problem that could be a real thing like a war like yeah. if if that's how it turned out. So, okay. So like, it's, it's one of those where, like, the gravity did not make sense until later. And if those arcs had happened in the order, you know, they did in the manga, maybe it would have had the weight it was supposed to. Yep. It, as it turns out, um, Horikoshi is a fantastic writer, uh, and knows how to correctly build up hype for a story and knows how to pace his shit and plan. And if you fuck with that, um, you might make everything worse. Uh, speaking so. of pacing, I have an interesting question for you. Hmm. Since uh, you know this, this se the season's basically come to an end. So I, I guess it's two questions: feelings on the season as a whole, and then two, kind of a more playful. Uh, what do you think is going to be the context for reintroducing all of the characters in the first episode of next season? What do you think is going to be their framing device mm. for that one? <sighs> Well, my feeling, so, like, I'm going to give two responses to the first question, because when I was reading the manga on this part, I basically felt exactly uh, about the um, the tournament arc w w between the classes, the same the manga as I did in the anime. It's good. It's good. It's not amazing. Um, and It's weird it, that it had some of the best animation in the season, though. It's uh, <laughs> infuriating that it did, um, and that's... Like, I thought that we were past this stupid fucking melting episode bullshit by having seasons instead of ongoing episode to episode every fucking week nonsense. But I guess we're not. That's great. I'm so glad that these people are being underpaid and overworked just for their work not to get used. Thank you, Japanese animation industry. Go fuck yourself. You gotta but, make a movie, though. But we also love you. <laughs> it, it, but, you know, um, I love a lot of the people um, who are doing all of that work. Uh, and I blame the committees that are pushing these stupid uh, schedules over the creatives every day. Um, now, that being said, uh, the actual, like, second half, I liked a lot in the manga. I like, a lot, a lot in the manga. And um, it was it's, it's up there in my top five favorite arcs from all of my hero. 
uh, and to see it kind of get mishandled in the anime makes me very sad. And I think I've made that quite apparent. Um, for my feelings on the season as a whole, I'm gonna say it was okay. Like I, I think, I think I have just kind of become a person who is less attuned to watching things week to week, and yeah. that's kind of what's hitting me more than I think the show's fault. Like I think it's just I have become a kind of, like I've got my viewing habits have become binging, and so when I can't do that for something, it it feels off. Uh, so I, I feel like I'm blaming that more than the show's content itself, maybe. Um, but as far as like our reintroduction episode, what I can see is uh, worst case scenario, it's going to be a here's what our, our winter vacation or whatever, or spring mm. break, everything before the cool stuff. Uh, we're going to have this episode of like, what what was everyone doing during their things? And it's just going to be Fillory seeing them one off hero moments to show off their powers or something. Uh, other one I could see is we have green fire hair lady looking like she's fronting the the assault and a bunch of UA students behind her. I can see her being like, all right, who are you? What do you do? I need to know what your powers are so I can strategize and work okay. with you and put together a plan. <laughs> I, I, I feel like that's a little too close to canon. I, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, have, I have a feeling that's not what it's going to be, but yeah. uh, if it was up to me and it's uh, we're starting a war story, how do you reintroduce your class room of characters? I go, well, their general's going to need what they do, need to know what they do and uh, put it together for a strat. I genuinely uh, wish they'd stop with the stupid bullshit. <laughs> my, my, my theory is that there are going to be like some visitors to UA like uh, kids that are going to be potentially applying. Like maybe you'll see some of those kindergartners that we had previously in one of those episodes. Ooh, okay. Uh, maybe water hose kid will show up. Maybe Aerie will be there and it'll be like, okay, now show them what it means to be real heroes. And then they show off their powers that way. Yeah, maybe. Who was, this is reminding me at the very end, there's like, a, we see a little kid going to, to his first day of school. Is that someone we know? That's, that's the that, water hose kid. Was that the water hose kid? Okay. Mm -hmm. He wasn't wearing his hat, so I didn't recognize him. Yeah. Was he not? Hmm. No, he was, he was just. All, all I remember is he he had the red Deku shoes on because he's. Like, oh yeah, the red like Deku, Deku shoes. Yeah. Which is cute as fuck. And he had an Endeavor figure, which I didn't expect. Yeah. Hey, you know, um, like All Might, old news, uh, All Might, old, old news. Yeah, you know what? Old news. Yep. Yeah, there's a new number one in town. And Deborah, so get... hot. It's so hot right now. So hot right Kindergartners now. today wearing Jordan jerseys? No way. <laughs> it's all about I don't, I don't. I don't I don't even know if they're wearing LeBron jerseys anymore, honestly. I just... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Am I that old? Do I not even know the next guy? I, I'm, I'm probably that old. And also not in touch with sports football. Yeah, no, me neither. Um, but yeah, so... Uh, sorry for getting so cynical there, by the way, but... Um, <laughs> I mean, honestly, I'm a very real, like, when it comes to the industry, I'm pretty fucking cynical about the whole goddamn thing, so, for just, me. He's a cynical old man. I, I am 34. I'm turning 33 tomorrow. Oh, yeah, everybody, give a, a, a premeditated happy birthday to Lana. Premeditated. Yeah. We're planning this one. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Think That's about a felony. First, <laughs> first degree I, birthday wishes. Exactly. Yeah. Um... But yeah, so uh, happy birthday. This season was a mixed bag. <laughs> it was. It, it, it was a true mixed bag. It, it happy had birthday, some... my hero. I'm disappointed in you. Yeah. Um. Uh, it, it, it was okay. I think it, like, I do think that, like, the sentiment that we had kind of throughout this is it is probably the weakest season so far. Oh, is it? Oh, what that... season would you, what I'd season I'd say it's between this and last up? season. And, uh, uh, last season, elite, like last season, had some pretty high highs, though. True. Like some I, incredibly high highs. That that overhaul fight, and then you had like gentle criminal. You had hero two, which ah, if I ever watch that scene and like some form of tear does not leave my face <laughs> when Harry smiles, check my fucking died. pulse. Yeah, you know what? You're right. Okay, fuck it. You're right. Um, and I'm frustrated and angry that you're right. Uh, I feel like it's it's been a while since I've gone back to rewatch it or anything, but I do feel like the season where they had to, what was it, the licensing exam test or something? Oh gosh, like that that yeah. part wasn't great. No, that was, that I, was pretty weak. I but, genuinely, especially, but I don't remember the rest of what like what season that was attached to. So maybe the first part was really cool. Especially because that, that's was that one season of the... three or four. When was that? I, I thought th that, that had to be season four. three because because 
Yeah, I'm, lo wow, I'm losing track. Wow, then four was really dense because four ha would have had. Oh, that was that uh, three. The test, okay, then it would. Okay, that would have been three. Yeah, yeah. it would have been close to the end of three then. Okay, three might have been pretty weak. But what also is something else also happened in three? D wasn't hold on season three. That was is... the all for one uh, all might fight, right? Yeah, yeah. Really good. and, and all... Deku Bakugo, and, and, which yeah, was really good. Saving so, Bakugo. Yeah. Okay, you know what? Okay, yep. Yeah. No, that was all really good. Really good. <laughs> uh, two Take it back. was. Two was stain and uh, the, the the tournament. Exams? Yeah, yeah. The 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 first like the sports festival, and then they had like the tournament against each other. Like that's that's Todoroki, Deku, and like all that stuff. Man, I I hate the fact. But yeah, that I, it I is think so I think this season I think this season is probably the weakest one so far. If like, and it could have been a lot better if it just had been paced properly. Wait, season three is. <laughs> uh, hold on, just to be clear, season three is the one where we um where they steal uh Bakugo. The Declaration yeah. of Independence. Yeah. Yeah, they steal Bakugo, and then there's the giant fight between All Might and. Is that All the one that one. starts with oh, them going shit, to like so they camp? So that starts at camp. Yeah, that starts at camp. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I was I was, was almost the licensing exam. Was this, so the licensing exam was season four. Wow, four was so dense. Was oh my god. It, <laughs> man, I'm I'm actually even looking at this just to make sure because it's there's just so much. Um, like I feel like we have more than happened. five seasons worth of show. Uh it's been, it's been a busy year for these students. To, yeah, to be clear, it does seem that um, that that licensing exam was also season three. Okay, yeah. then season three was very dense. Yeah, yeah. season three was very dense. De dense, dense. Season four uh, was the was the Saikai arc. Um, yeah, that's and then, that's that's what I remember. And then uh, what was after that? Uh, school festival and gentle. School festival and gentle. Right. Yeah. Um, I think we did. We also get uh, the makeup exams in there too, like mixed in. I feel like we did. Uh, I, yes. Yeah. yeah there, there, there was, was like an episode the or two of them. Yeah. Okay. Man. And then this season. This season's gonna be really the, yeah, easy to remember. Se se season five, they they finally got their thing because you know one of the first episodes we got was them just kicking the shit out of the Water Brothers, and I was like, ah, that is a cool moment. Okay. Cool. But you kind of forget about it. Was it? Uh, no. Wait. Which. Which season started with the guy who had a camera in his body as his power? That was, was that uh, this that season was, or last season? That was, that was, that was either. Four. Yeah. Okay, that was last season. Okay. I'm, I'm pretty. Yeah, yeah, it was season four. I forget all of the first episodes. I remember the second season. Yes. The first episode was the at like the pool or something. Yeah, I was gonna say. I know one of them starts with them at a pool. Yeah. And having a race, and that was fun. But hey. Anyway, so. yeah, lots of stuff in every season, and. Uh, I think like, and that's not to say like the season was terrible, but I feel like if you said this was the weakest season so far, I don't think I disagree. Yeah. Uh, like there, there were things that I think weirdly enough, I think last season was like this kind of like breaking point for me where it was like my first, like, I don't know. I didn't love this season. Like cool stuff happened, but the whole thing wasn't like a, whoa, for me. Like, I feel like it has been. It was, more, I feel it, like was this... it was another case of peaks and valleys, but the yeah. peaks were really high. Peaky. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas so, this season kind of felt like more maybe it met in the middle-ish. Like, I don't know if its valleys were quite as low for me sometimes, but so, the peaks were definitely not as high. So what you're saying is, whoa, whoa, it's all right. Everything yeah, yeah, I definitely was, right. whoa, whoa, then it's all right. Everything was not all right, though. <laughs> uh, but hey, uh, I think that's about it. I don't, I don't know if there's much more that we can say about this episode or this season in general. Um, Until the movie comes out. Uh, well, I'm sure once the movie comes out, We'll watch it and then we'll give our opinion on it. I am uh, very happy, even though there was that crappy filler episode, that it like they did not do too much. Like, and here's a movie coming tie-in throughout the season. The, I feel yeah, like that happened more last I, year. I was a little disappointed that the filler episode didn't do more to do that, though. Like, here's your, here's your shot, and they had like one scene that maybe yeah. tied into the movie. Right. I. Yeah, well, uh, when the movie, I don't know if there's actually a release date for the movie. Um, in America? Yeah, because I know that it's been advertised a lot. October 29th? Yeah. Uh, you know what? I think I do remember them talking about the movie coming out soon, so. Ah, right in time for Halloween. Ooh, yep. Uh, spooky. Yep. All spooky right, so heroes. when it comes out on October 29th, um, I'm sure we'll probably go out and watch it wherever it's going to be. I'm really hoping it's going to be at the Alamo Draft House. I do not want to watch it and say, like, a Cinemark or some bullshit. 
um but if it's at the end like no matter where it's at we'll, we'll go see it and then you'll get a review of it i'm sure it will be a movie i'm sure it will exist and it will either surpass that expectation or it will be disappointing yeah i do not it's, I, it's really hard not to surpass the expectation of existing i'll say that <laughs> i genuinely have very little hope i'm gonna i'm gonna be really honest with you i want to see why deku's so wanted <laughs> show me his crimes i just want there to be like an evil deku with a mustache that i want bakugo to be all about evil deku i want him to be like put him in jail throw away the key lock him up uh but hey um everybody in the comments tell us what you thought of this season did you did you think it was good great did you or are you more like me uh was it just, good bad ugly how'd you feel um but what, what crime do you think deku committed <laughs> But hey, thank you all so very much for tuning in week to week, or I don't know how often ever you turned tuned in for these. Uh, this will be the last one of the season, so this is the last episode until the movie slash next season. Um, as always, make sure to take care of yourselves, uh, be safe out there, and uh, yeah, we'll see you for the movie. Adios, everyone. See you in theaters. Bye. Plus Ultra. <laughs>